Hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I wish everyone a happy new year as the year just started clearly. Hopefully everything went well for you and you had a nice time. And I still have all your fingers as a saying we have over here is I don't know if you uh, know the state of our new years but it can be a war zone sometimes. The fireworks the kids light over here is absolutely crazy. It's like uh, it's like a terrorist attack if you ask me. Like sometimes uh, when a one of these really heavy fireworks go off, like, I literally, like, feel the shockwave inside my house, and I live, like, uh, 11 up high, and even my fish, like, uh, can feel it, you can see them, like, uh, get scared and go around the tank when those big boys go out. But anyway, like I said, I hope you uh, had a good start of the new year and didn't have any injuries or accidents. Let's, uh, focus on the tank. The aquascape is starting to look really good, like I'm uh, really happy with the changes that I made last week. Two weeks ago I started uh, making some small changes, as in uh, doing maintenance twice a week, for one week at least, and also cut off 30 minutes of uh, the total time that the lights are on during the day, and I went from 8 hours to 7.5 hours, and as I mentioned previously, I used to run all my other tanks on 7.5 hours, and it always used to work perfect, so I went back to that and I was hoping to run 8 hours because it's just nice having a light on a bit longer during the day, but hey, it is what it is. But I'm not complaining, like I said, the tank is looking really good so far, like uh, the tread algae is way less, it literally used to grow, especially on the right hand side, it used to grow from like all the way from where the plants are or the bottom of the tank all the way to the top of the water surface and it was just way too much clearly, like LG is always going to be a part of an aquarium, and I know that, but like, I don't want a tank completely filled up with just LG, like, it's not uh, the thing I'm aiming for, or pretty sure anyone is aiming for. And I don't mind having a little bit of LG here and there, like, I think it's actually quite natural and it adds on to the agent, and it's just part of nature. Like I said, if you're going to have an aquarium, you're always going to have a little bit of LG, it's just, uh, it comes with it. It's like land without trees, or an ocean without fish, like, it's not possible. Oh, well, maybe at the rate humanity is going. By the way, watch Racing Extinction. Anyway, after I reduced the uh, light intensity, the next maintenance session, when I uh, pulled out the algae, I could really tell the difference, like, before it felt like really strong, and like, clearly also at the rate it was growing. And if I had to compare it with anything, it was almost like, pulling loose felt crow like it felt about the same strength and resistance and not that felt crow is very strong clearly like it's in kid shoes in the end of the day but you could definitely tell like it had a little bit of uh, tuck to it like it would even lift small stones out of the water like clearly not the big ones but all the small ones near the pathway like I had some issues with it removing it because whenever I did like it uh, moved them around and the way I figured out to get it out the easiest is just uh, grab it with your hands, like don't grab it with any tools, just grab it with your hands, rub it around your hand or finger a little bit and then pull it as quick as you can, can so it just uh, comes undone, because if you pull it really slowly, you just pull all the plants loose and you lift up all the rocks and everything and that's the only advice I can give you, just pull it out as quick as you can. It's like removing a band-aid I guess, you pull it quickly and not slowly. But to finish the story where I started, uh, afterwards the LG felt like way less strong, like I could pull it out really easily, it, it like almost broke off, like uh, I, it didn't have any resistance anymore, it was just moving my hand through the water and the LG just automatically came with it. So I was really happy about that as I clearly been trying to fight it for the last few weeks or maybe even months. It's like 90 to 95% less in the amount it grows but also the amount that is present in the tank and I know at this point I'm probably not gonna get 100% rid of it because the tank has been really infested with it but like, as I mentioned before I don't mind a little bit here and there like I think it's natural. All the footage you see, all the close-up shots are from exactly 4 months old. Unfortunately, I had a overview from the 4 month old as well, but uh, it didn't look as good, something ran wrong with the lighting, so the uh, the overview is from 4 months and 1 week old. And gladfully, 1 week later, everything was still looking the same as well, like I'm really happy that the changes that I made are making an impact and it's uh, going towards the direction I wanted it to be. And I'm gonna see how everything is gonna be the next few weeks and I won't be making any changes anytime soon, I feel like. 
For maintenance, I'm still doing the same things. Still small water change, 5%, 10 liters every week. When uh, I also do a little bit of maintenance to the tank itself, about half an hour. Normally, I spend that half an hour purely on removing thread algae, but fortunately, I don't have to do that anymore. So I could actually focus on, uh, yeah, making the plants look nice here and there. And I had a lot of Cuba in the middle area that was like either had a little bit of algae left on it still that I removed, but also had like some moss growing in between it. And the moss has grown quicker than the Cuba does, and if you don't stay on top of it, it will completely take over the Cuba at some point. And I mentioned in videos before how I like it when plants mix with each other, but the cube is the only thing that I really stay on top of, because like I said, it grows really slowly, and if you don't remove the moss, it's just gonna die off. I still haven't added any fertilizers to the tank, and uh, the only thing that I've been adding to the tank clearly is CO2, a little bit of uh, that I injected. Another thing I still do is taking out 75% uh, of the duckweed as well every time I do some maintenance, and... As I mentioned before, I make shrimp food out of the duckweed, and if anyone's curious, I'll put up a link on the top right where you can see how to make it. I didn't make the video myself, the channel or the guy who does it is called Mark Shrimp Tanks, and it's a really neat channel, and if you're into shrimp and aquarium and planted tanks, I would definitely look it up. I think it's so neat, like, it's uh, very useful, because I have a lot of it clearly, as I barely do any water changes, kind of use the duckweed as it kind of take all the bad nutrients out of the water, and... Yeah, you have a lot of it, and if you're growing it, then you're using the energy to grow it, like, it's good to have a purpose for it, and I think it's a really good purpose, because the shrimp love it, my vampire crabs love it as well, my fish even eat it, like, uh, yeah, it's great. And you could just literally dry it as it is and feed it to the fish, but I also want to feed it to the shrimp, and the method he uses is very nice, he adds some other stuff to it here and there, like, I believe, bee pollen, and maybe even minerals, I personally never add minerals, because there's a lot of minerals in the tank, but with the rocks I use, and I got very hard water to begin with. And yeah, I can't be bothered buying the bee pollen either, but if you purely just use the duckweed, it's already a good product. Like I said, I use it, or I make it, and uh, it's perfect. Like, uh, all my animals love it, so. And speaking about my animals in the tank, everything is still doing great. Um, the Nerit snails, I would say I might have lost one every month. Like, I think I lost three of the uh, 20 in total. Unfortunately, I don't know why because I still had like some spot out here and there so I'm sure they didn't run out of food and I just feed plenty for the shrimp fish and there's some leftover food here and there on the ground so I don't think they starved like I said I don't know what it is but uh, yeah I did see some other people having some issues with nerite snails because uh, apparently they are quite sensitive to uh, water parameters I thought snails never were really sensitive to any water changes or parameters, like I thought they were a bit hardier, but uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know what could have caused it, but I still have to rest and they're still doing their jobs and I can still definitely recommend them to anyone because they clean up the tank better than anything else could. The red new caradina shrimp are doing really well as well, like uh, they're everywhere, like if I have to do an estimation, I would say there's at this point hundreds, maybe even a thousand in there, like uh, for every 10 that you see, there's probably another 50 to 100 hidden underneath the plants and in between the rocks and uh, the closer you get, the more you start seeing and like I said, absolutely crazy amount of them and they're thriving, they're breeding still and I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep doing their thing. The four amount of shrimp that I added to the tank are doing really well as well, they're showing some really nice patterns and colors and I actually recorded some footage from them uh, a few weeks after this so I'll probably make actually a dedicated amount of shrimp video because I had so much footage of them and they were looking really nice. And definitely all the fish are doing really good in the tank as well. As I mentioned before in my other videos, the uh, pearl danios weren't doing that great. I actually had another pearl danio that was some, showing some signs uh, of sickness or parasites or not doing that great. But gladfully it recovered and it was the first one to do and hopefully it's gonna stay there and hopefully I'm not gonna have any more that are gonna be causing issues. And you might have seen them here and there. There's uh, a few Galaxy Rasboras or Celestial Pearl Daniel, basically the smaller brother of the big Pearl Daniels, I suppose. And uh, they weren't doing that great in another small tank that I had. And I'll make a video about that in the future. But uh, yeah, for now I moved them over to this tank because uh, I was hoping it would do a little bit better. 
So if they look a little bit skinny and a little weird, that's why. But uh, I hope they do better in the tank, as I said. And yeah, I'm not giving up on them yet. I've still been testing the water parameters here and there to make sure the uh, values don't get out of hand. As uh, the way i running this tank is quite contradictual. And as I mentioned before, even though I'm doing things a little bit different here and there, if anything is going to get out of hand or if anything is going to get too bad, I'm going to do a big water change no matter what. Like, uh, I'm not going to make my animals suffer. But for now, it still hasn't been necessary. Uh, my ammonia is non-existent. My nitrate NO2 non-existent and my nitrate uh, NO3 has been sitting steadily at 12.5 parts a million for the last few months now and as I also mentioned before in one of my videos it isn't too bad having a little bit in there because it's a natural plant fertilizer and if you add fertilizers to your tank there are also nitrates in there and that's also one of the big main reasons why everyone has to do at least 50% or all these big water changes. And you hear people say more and more as well when uh, they do aquascape tutorials that uh, whenever you start using fertilizer it's probably a good idea that you use half the dosage that's on the bottle and sometimes even less and like i said in my opinion it's just not needed to add it at all i'm sure there's a lot of other valuable uh, nutrients in there that are good for the plants but but in my opinion it's not necessary at all and in some situations it can even do worse than it does any good I feel like at some point big businesses started taking over the uh, aquarium and aquascaping hobby and they started promoting so much unnecessary and extra stuff that you should buy that clearly costs a lot of money and that you definitely need but as I'm trying to tell or say I feel like it's uh, unnecessary in most of the cases like in my tank as well I just got ordinary gravel that I got from the local hardware store or garden store or garden center and it's just regular one between one and three millimeter gravel which is very cheap but most importantly it doesn't continuously leak all these nutrients and all other abundant stuff that you really don't need in your water such as most aqua soils do and in my opinion my plants look fine at the moment and sure yeah yes they could have looked a little bit lusher and a little bit more vibrant or green and everything could grow 10 times quicker but it also means that uh, you have to do your maintenance 10 times more often and that's just something I don't want to do. And I'm sure all these professional aquascapers love that quick results and all these quick tanks and uh, they can enter all these competitions quickly and then uh, make their next tank and uh, up to the next one and up to the next one and up to the next one but I'm really trying to stay away from that mentality. There's also a lot of YouTube video creators who like that kind of style and just want quick results and uh, make a lot of videos due to that and have a lot of content. But uh, this is not what my channel is going to be about. I'm going to try to keep this tank for the next few years and I won't be continuously rescaping my tanks just for content. I'm going to stop rambling. I do have another video coming out soon, but I'll talk about that in a bit. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything, feel free to leave a like and if you're curious how this tank or project is going to develop further into the future, make sure to subscribe. As always, I keep updating it. I won't be uploading another video for about a good month as we're completely up to date now. I uh, pushed out a few videos in the last few weeks and we're exactly where the tank is now. But I'm still uploading videos of my baby vampire crabs every week. So if you want to see some other videos of mine, feel free to check those out. But as I mentioned before, I will be uploading another video of a 30 liter aquascape that I made right next to the big aquascape. But it's gonna be a big video, I need at least two weeks uh, to make that. I made that a few months back and it's gonna be a build video and including the first few months of how it developed. And here's a little teaser of the tank so you know what to expect. So stay tuned for that. And this is a different tank, by the way, of the uh, Pearl Daniels. I have different inhabitants for this, so it's going to be a fun reveal. Have a nice day, and I hope you have a great start of your year. And as I always say, appreciate nature. Hope to see you next time. See you later.